why am I doing this really late? Speak lies. I know at one time when it started getting late, I'm like, why is why? You know, I asked the Lord to order my steps. So I'm praying this is his order. Okay. I don't know because he said do it decently also. But nonetheless, what I came to talk about is the weight. You know that weight that most of us don't like hearing? The weight. W-A-I-T. Now, we spoke, uh, we've had a speak life about this um, at least two other times, I think. The blessings in the weight. And there's something in the weight. It's always something in the weight. There's always something in the weight. Whether he's protecting us. Whether he hasn't fully completed his work. Of preparation whether it's not the right season the right time the right connection whatever the case we're not even in the right perspective to receive the promises there's always something in the wait there's always something in the wait but today or this evening actually I got understanding of the wait and then when I was about to come on I was uh, trying to find what the verse is I know one place is Psalm 37 but I typed in and I got blessed because this explains the weight it's not something I have to really explain this scripture explains the weight and I I didn't even see the scripture like this until I got this revelation about the weight with God about the weight and how important it is when he tells us to wait and it could cause so much damage not waiting not waiting because we're not in alignment or not moving just overextending the weight so it's like be in alignment like the okay we're gonna go to ezekiel house like the um creatures first we're going to job house like the creatures in ezekiel this is there is nothing lacking from god he gives us instructions for everything we have everything that we need that pertain to life and godliness it's the one, the obedience, and two, the wisdom. We got to get the wisdom. So when we get the word wait, that's his wisdom. And now let's get the understanding of this particular wait. So we're in Job's house and we're in chapter 14. And I'm going to start, um, I guess I'm going to start in chapter one. I'm not sure. With Job, Job is such a parable for me. Um, it doesn't, it's like the uh, chapters 10 to 31 in Proverbs. The parables are so intertwined that you really need wisdom you need you need and lord i lack wisdom with this job i lack wisdom with your lord so i need wisdom but listen for the weight so man that is born of verse 1 job 14 man that is born of a woman Okay, is a few days and full of trouble. Man that is bo born of a woman. See, when you ask God for things, expect Him. Because this verse would, wouldn't have never made sense to me before. And it hasn't. Man that is born of a woman is a few days. And for trouble. I pray he allow us to go in this hopefully tomorrow. Okay. 
God's will. He comes forth like a flower and is cut down. He flees also as a shadow and continues not. And does you or do you open your eyes upon such a one and bring me into judgment with you? Okay, so this must be uh, Job's part of the speech of talking. Yes, Job started in at least chapter 12. Okay, and, and do you open your eyes upon such a one and bring me into judgment with you? Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean, not one? Seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee, with the Lord. You have appointed his bounds or boundaries, okay? That he cannot pass. Turn from him that he may rest till he shall accomplish as a harling his days, a higher. For there is hope of a tree. I love this part. For there is hope of a tree if it be cut down that it will sprout again and that the tender branch thereof will not cease. Though the root thereof wax old in the earth and the stock thereof die in the ground, yet through the scent of water it will bud and bring forth brows like a plant. So the same is with the children of God or those that are called or chosen by God. Even when we're in our worst state, it's just like it said with Abraham. He didn't even acknowledge that his man parts were dead and, and that Sarah was too old. He believed the person that made the promise, which is God. So we are trees. We are grass, we are flowers, like he said. And there is symbolisms in the Bible, um, parallels. So though the root thereof wax old in the earth and the stock thereof die in the ground, it's just like a, uh, palm trees are like that too, but palm trees are You'll see those parables. We are also palm trees. Let me stay on task. Let me stay on task. Yet through the scent of water, it will bud. All we need is to him. That's all we need. And we can bud from that. We can bud from the him. We can be healed. We can be delivered. Just from the Him, from God's shadow. Yes. So it will bud and bring forth brows like a plant. But man dies and wastes away. Yea, man gives up the ghost. And where is he? As the waters fail from the sea and the flood decays and dries up. So man lies down and rises not till the heavens be no more. They shall not awake nor be raised out of their sleep. Oh, that you would hide me in the grave, that you would keep me secret until your wrath be passed. And that's what the children of God will rest until all be fulfilled and God's wrath passes, okay? It says that you would appoint me a set time and remember me. If a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait. 
until my change comes. Even when we are walking this earth and we're no more, the children of God lives again. You know, a lot of people claim it over their life. Well, you only live once. No, no, no. That may be for many. But for those that believe God and have received the Son, we live twice. We die once. But our life must be evident that we're living to live again. So when those weights come, we got to wait for our change to come. And that's what God showed me. The weight. The weight is for he does the work. So when we go before God and we have these plans of making things happen and, and we got to we got to figure this thing out. No we don't. Whatever he tells us is the truth. And it shall come to pass. But if we go before that, we go before the blessing, we go before the release, we go before the protection, we go before the promises, we go before as little G-gods. And none of us are greater than our master. So in that weight, we don't know what's in that weight. Because many things we are applying ourselves to may not even be for us. It's our desire. It's our imagination. It's our will and our wants. But God's work is perfect. He has the master plan. He has designed it. He has created it. He has formed it. And he has made it. And no man knows what comes after him. No man knows what goes before him. Because it's spiritual. We live like natural beings. But we was created to be spiritually. And we walk spiritual whether we realize it or not. Because when we don't wait, we walk in the spirit of disobedience. When we don't wait, we walk in the spirit of rebellion. When we don't wait, we walk in the spirit of, we don't need God. We're hasty. And before the fall comes the haste or the pride of man. In that wait, not only is he forming the thing that we're waiting for, but he's forming us. To be in alignment with whatever he has. We, a lot of times, we're looking at the person that's doing so. You know how you got that co-worker sometimes in our household with our marriages, with our children, with our siblings, whatever. And we see how the person is reacting. And especially if it's in a contentious way or it's in a rebellious way or it's just not one accord. And we see that. And many, many of us start to speak what we see, forgetting we walk by faith and not by sight. We don't walk by sight, but we can get into that posture. I know with me, what God's showing me myself. I have been hasty in this season. I've been walking by what I see happening. But that's not the truth. Because spiritual realms, unless he opened my eyes to see what's happening in spirit, I can't see the work that God does from the beginning to the end. Mm -mm. God, Jesus is the author of it. And the finisher of our faith. He is the captain of our soul. He is the one that wrote. He is the written word of our life. God wrote it and Jesus is the written word of our lives. So in that wait, sometimes we are on chapter two 
And we see we're trying to jump to chapter 8. We haven't even gone through 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We haven't done that. But we're jumping ahead. Because God may have given us a vision or a dream or somebody came and spoke something into our life. This is what you're going to do. And this is... There's usually always a confirmation with God. When we commune with him ourselves. The confirmation... If we live in the flesh, we expect the confirmation to be something that we see or we hear somebody tells us. Or once things truly are manifesting, where we can understand the manifestation. But confirmation comes with communing with God, communication. And he'll spell it out in his word. He'll spell it out in his word. For those that hear the voice of God, he'll tell us. But it's always something in his word because they're one. They're one. Sometimes it's in two we get the revelation of the wisdom in his word. Get that understanding of that revelation. Then we can walk in our ordered steps. Order my steps in your word. So as I close... As a close, because uh, Ezekiel shows us, Ezekiel tells us exactly, exactly how we're supposed to do it. So before I, I go there, the verse in Psalm 37, I'm really closing because it's really late. Psalm 37, verse 3, trust in the Lord and do good. So shall you dwell in the land. And verily, you shall be. Always a promise. B brings it into existence. Shall is the promise. Okay? You shall be fed. Delight yourself also in the Lord. That's a precept. This is how things come to pass. Delight thyself also in the Lord. Delight ourselves in him. Communication with God. Spending time with God. And reading his mind and his heart. His word. And delighting ourselves in his mind and his heart. Delighting ourselves in the communion with God. Singing unto the Lord. Clapping unto the Lord. Dancing unto the Lord. Holy stuff. Yeah. And that fellowship. He says delight this is, this is why some of us, our waiting period is so long because we don't trust the Lord to bring it to pass. We don't trust the Lord and we don't do good nor speak good. Our words can cancel things out. I realize my perspective today. And there is a walk video with the Go Tell My Brother Ministry looking from a blessed eye or an evil eye or a wounded eye. Those things we've been through changes and skews our perspective even of God. If we have trust issue with people, the likelihood of having trust issues with God. If we have trust issues with ourselves, the likelihood of Having trust issues with God. But he says, trust in the Lord and do good. So shall verily, listen to the wording, you shall be fed. Delight yourself also in the Lord. And he, the Lord, shall give you the desires of thine heart. Even what we commissioning and petitioning him about. Commit your way. Commit your way. The, the way you're living your life. The way we're living. The way we're speaking. Because Jesus is the way. So the word. So even commit our words. And the way we're living. Unto the Lord. Trust, he says it again, 
also in him. And he, the Lord, shall bring it to pass. Not we ourselves. Because God gives. Okay? Ezekiel 1, and I'm closing. Ezekiel 1, verse 3. Um, mm. Verse 1. Now it came to pass in the 13th year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, <clears throat> as I was among the captives by the river of Shabar, that the heavens were opened, and I saw visions of God. In the fifth day of the month, which was the fifth year of King Jehoiachin, Jehoiachin, Captivity, the word of the Lord came expressly. Without a doubt, it came expressly. And to Ezekiel, the priest, the son of Buzzi, in the land of the Kedins, soothsayers, psychics, all that stuff, right? It says, by the river of Shabar. And the hand of the Lord was upon him. And I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north. A great cloud. Um, and a fire. All the Spirit of God. And a fire enfolding itself. And brightness was about it. And out of the mist thereof, as the color of amber, out of the mist of the fire. Also, out of the mist thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. And this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. Yeah. And everyone had four faces. And everyone had four wings and their feet were straight feet and the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot could be okay could be a sheep right and they sparkled like the color of varnished brass so is the man with the measuring tape brass okay and they had the hands of a man under their wings on their four sides and they four had their faces in their wings. Their wings were joined one to another. They turned not. They turned not. When they went. They went one. They went every one straight forward. Okay, so I'm going to. Um, okay, I'm going to keep on. As for the likeness of their faces, they four had the face of a man and the face of a lion on the right side. And they four had the face of an ox on the left side. They four had the face of an eagle. Thus were their faces and their wings were stretched up, always giving them glory. Two wings of every one were joined one to another to cover their bodies. And they went, every one, straight forward. God says, don't turn to the left hand, nor to the right. We follow the Spirit of God. We go straight. But in this generation, a lot of us have gone backwards. That's how you get backsliding. Yeah. Yeah. We don't, we don't want to delight ourselves in God. We don't want to commit our way to God. And we don't want to trust God. And we don't want to wait on God. We don't want to wait on God. That's the part I missed. Oh, oh Lord. I tell me. Okay. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Quickly, I, I just went back to Psalm 37. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Verse 5. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth your righteousness when we trust, commit, and delight ourselves. Right? Um, he will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait 
patiently. That's what I was. Wait patiently. For the Lord. Fret not yourself. Don't fret yourself. Just wait patiently. Fret not yourself. Because of him who prospers in his way. Because the children of God, we're not doing it our way no more. We're doing it the Lord's way now. Because we've committed our lives into him. We've delighted ourselves in him. And we're trusting him. And when we do that, we go straight for it. I'm skipping. Verse 19. And when the living creatures went, the wheels, because now wheels then came into... Hey, I'm just going to keep going. Um... And when the living creatures went, the wheels went uh, by them. And when the living creatures was lifted up from the earth, the wheels was lifted up, lifted up. Whithersoever the spirit was to go. I'm in Ezekiel 1, verse 20. And the wheels was lifted up against them. For or because the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. When those went, these went. Where the Spirit of the Lord goes, we go. The Spirit of the Lord goes uh, goes straight forward, we go straight forward. The Spirit of the Lord goes to the right, we go to the right. When we delight ourselves in God. When we wait for the instruction of the Holy Spirit. When we commit ourselves unto the Lord. When we trust Him. And we rest. Until he says go. Because our steps are ordered. By the Lord. Because we're good men. So I pray somebody gets something out of this. Wait on the Lord. And again I say wait. Till your change come. It's going to come through his word. So seek him. Love y'all. Have the most blessed, blessed sleep. In the mighty and awesome and most powerful name. In the name of Jesus, love y'all, peace.